Okay, we're gonna go be we're gonna go really fast. Hopefully you guys can handle really fast talking, because that's how we're gonna do this. We have about 40 slides to cover in five minutes. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my Phoenix project, one developer's evolutionary journey. And it actually starts with this fellow, Gene Kim. If you do not know who Gene Kim is, I'm actually kind of amazed by that, because Gene is everywhere. He's at conferences speaking all the time, and he specifically spoke at a conference that I also spoke at. It was actually kind of crazy. We we're both keynote speakers, and we had people, uh, I specifically had people come up to to me at the end of my presentation, maybe a few hours later, they said, we loved your presentation. I said, did you like the demo? And they're like, we didn't actually see a demo, but I'm going to buy the book. And I realized, oh, they're not talking about me. And I had to think, you know, what was it? I, I didn't have my glasses on at the time, so maybe that was part of the confusion. But maybe, maybe I had to kind of think about what was the confusion here? He's an entrepreneur, kind of the king of DevOps, if you will. I'm specifically a developer advocate. I've been at Red Hat 10 years, so we didn't really have that similarity. He founded the DevOps Enterprise Summit. I founded DevNexus Developer Conference out of Atlanta, so we both have founded conferences for technologists. He's a world-famous author, and I pretty much have authored some tweets. So again, not much in common there, but then I finally figured out why did people confuse us, and it's because he has a goatee, and I have a goatee. So that's what it is. So apparently we're twinsies with facial hair, but that's awesome. But we, what we both have uh, is a passion specifically for the hands-on technologists. So for those developers that craft awesome code, for those infrastructure uh, operators that actually spin out amazing infrastructure, the people who put hands to keyboard matter a lot to me, and I know they also matter a lot to Gene in particular. And so let's talk about that just briefly, because we're going to talk about, about DevOps, and we're going to walk you through a very fast project. So the developer who thinks they could throw their stuff over the wall and bounce it off the head of the operator, right, on a Friday afternoon, and then they can go out drinking while the operator has to make that stuff run all weekend, yeah, that doesn't work anymore. And we basically have to have developers and operators working hand in hand in a harmonious way, working together to build better business value faster. That is the new world we're about to enter, and not, while not every organization is there yet, that is the world we're going through. So let me tell you quickly about my Phoenix project. It was actually based in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, funny enough, we were going to take an old character-based user, uh, user interface system that was not making them competitive. We we're going to replace it with a web-based system with a customer self-service portal. We were going to basically do all of that, go directly to production, no migration, no actual cutover of any sort. Just one morning, they would, the workers would show up on a brand new system, and we were going to put $5 million at risk when we did this. And by the way, the time box was fixed, the requirements were fixed, and all this had to be done in an incredibly short time frame. I didn't mention to the boss they should read myth man month and he had not but I said not only do we have to work overtime we actually won't sleep and his famous quote was great you can sleep when you're dead so I took that to heart we basically saddled up we basically pulled the best engineers I could find inside the company we hired some additional folks we basically grouped all our cubicles together because when we did a stand-up meeting I actually jumped up on the desk of the top cubicle and basically said What's blocking you? Where are you challenged? Can you help her? And that's how we did a stand-up meeting almost every day. It was standing on top of the actual desk. And then we did our own burn-down chart. We did a weekly deliverable and demos. And that was what we tried to do. And we promptly put it in production on time and shut down the entire business. It was ugly. They point of sale transactions were now done by hand. They were taking receipts by hand. We actually locked people out of the building because we had third-party integration that actually did door locks too. So it was bad. But the one thing that we knew, in order to get out of this, we had to work together, and we basically had to bring dev, ops, DBAs, the business, and the executive team, and we had to work together. We eventually did solve it, and I'll keep on moving because we've got to move fast, but we did eventually solve it over the course of the next three months, rolling out patches almost every night, doing bug fix Saturdays, but let's kind of keep going, okay? All right, so this is your evolutionary journey. You basically have to have self-service, on-demand, infrastructure as code that's API-driven, where the developer and whomever needs a resource can get to it instantly. It shouldn't take three weeks to get a VM. You have to embrace this concept of dev and ops. It's dev ops together, as well as security and business and all the other key players in the software architecture. You gotta think about CI, CD, and you gotta think about your specific deployment pipeline. You gotta think about your automation when it comes to Puppet, Chef, or Ansible. You also need to think about what's coming in the world of containers and microservices and then you can be the GitHub unicorn and a mythical beast. Okay, 
Do read these books. If you've not read them yet, you must. You must read these books. It's The Phoenix Project by Gene Kim. It's also the new book that just shipped about a week and a half ago, The DevOps Handbook. Just read them again and again, actually. And then the last thing I'll leave you with here is by a fellow named Viktor Frankl, uh, incredibly inspirational, a Nazi uh, concentration camp survivor. If you can no longer change the situation, you must change yourself. And then finally, the last thing you can change is your attitude. If you can't change anything else, you can change your attitude. Thank you very much.